The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the sixth chapter. Jesus left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is his wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor except in their hometown, and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two, and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus and Satan were having a lengthy argument about who was the better computer programmer. They decided to hold a contest with God as the judge. They sat themselves at computers and began typing furiously for several hours straight. Just when the competition was about to end, a bolt of lightning struck, knocking out the electricity. Moments later, when the power was restored, God announced that the contest was over. God first asked Satan what he had come up with. Satan, who was visibly upset, cried, I have nothing. I lost it all when the power went out. Very well then, God said. Let's see if Jesus fared any better. Jesus entered a command, and the screen came to life in vivid display, while voices of an angelic choir poured forth from the speakers. Satan was astonished. He stuttered, but, but, but how? I lost everything. Yet Jesus' program is intact. How did he do it? God smiled all-knowingly and replied, Jesus saves. <laughs> when the power goes out in our lives, it creates problems. Without electricity, you can't use the refrigerator, open cans, watch television, surf the internet, or do very much of anything. We may have flashlights or candles close at hand, but it's a major inconvenience in this modern age of technology. Today's gospel tells of a power failure that Jesus experienced when he went back home to his hometown, to his synagogue to teach. We're told that Jesus could do no deed of power there, even though Jesus laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. But in comparison to raising the daughter of Jairus and healing the woman with the 12-year hemorrhage, healing a few sick people wasn't really the power people had come to expect from Jesus. 
The reason for this power failure was the old I knew him when story. People who heard Jesus questioned, where did this man get all this? Isn't this a carpenter? Mary's son? The brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? Jesus, even though you've gone away, you have a wonderful message to share with us. You're still little Jesus from down the road. You have no real power here. Well, it wasn't that Jesus didn't have power, but the power couldn't work. Something was missing on the part of the receivers. They simply couldn't accept the fact that Jesus was anything than Mary's kid, the carpenter. I wonder where we are in accepting the words and actions and promises of Jesus for our lives. Do we accept them as something that has power to transform us, to bring us peace and healing, guidance and forgiveness? Or do we think that the story of Jesus is a kind of meaningless fairy tale that we read from each Sunday without real power in our lives? Do we understand the real meaning of the term Jesus saves or do we believe this has to do with our eternal life and nothing else? You see, in the second part of this gospel reading, Jesus turned to his disciples, sent them out two by two to share the good news of the kingdom of God, giving them authority over unclean spirits. Up to this point in this gospel, Jesus' primary word to his disciples was, come, follow me. Now, Jesus says, go. Go into the world. It's pretty amazing that Jesus would turn over his work to this little band of amateurs who could no, in no way be considered ready. They were pretty much in the dark as to what Jesus was all about. Jesus said, go. You don't need very much. Everything won't be perfect. You won't have all the answers. The important thing is, go. We are all told to go. We are sent as well. We are called to be apostles. We are also a pretty motley band of apostles. We don't really fully know what this God and Jesus and faith stuff is all about. Most of us have never had a preaching or a teaching class. We have our jobs and school and that super busy retired life to attend to. But we are called, as baptized children of God, to fulfill the responsibility to, to carry Christ with us in whatever we do. Our responsibility as, as children of God is, as we say in the baptismal service, to carry God's creative and redeeming word into the world. We can be uncertain, even a little bit scared, as we strive to live faithful lives, embodying the most wonderful good news of God's love for us in Jesus Christ. And we can do that because as in the words of the Lord that Paul stated, my grace is sufficient for you. question. Where was Moses when the lights went out? Answer. In the dark. Thank God we are not in the dark. We are not without power. In Christ and through Christ we hear and can be apostles. 
In Christ and through Christ, we bear God's truth. The good news of God in Christ, in and for our times.